Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about my top 10 favorite niche winter fragrances. So these 10 on the list, they're all niche fragrances. So uh, the quality is going to be a bit better. The projection and longevity is going to be a little bit longer, usually than some designer fragrances. And the 10 on this list, uh, plus one honorable mention, I absolutely love. Um, since having these in my collection, they have just done so, so well. And these are going to be the 10 that I personally are going to wear the most this winter time. So just before we get on with the video, guys, if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to drop a like on this video. It really does help out with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe as well, because we're growing a really nice fragrance community. Uh, we all talk about it way too much. Uh, and we're all uh, part of the addiction. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, uh, then please feel free to subscribe as well. We'd be more than happy to have you. Okay, so like I said, top 10 niche. Weather's getting a lot colder, especially in the UK, it's getting very cold. With the winter time, you want stuff that's gonna be cozy, sweet, a little bit warm. Uh, you wanna try and stay away from like the fresh fragrances and stuff like this one, for example, Percival. You wanna stay away from them. You wanna get the warmer, cozier fragrances. So these 10, uh, all of them are super sweet, super cozy, and have like a warmth to them where it like invites you in. Uh, so we're going to kick things off with the number 10 spot. This one is a fairly newer one on my list, um, and I'm not too sure how to feel about it. I, I think, personally, it's quite unisex, and it is marketed to be in unisex, mainly, I think, because of the rum note in here. It's done in a way that I feel it like leans both sides. Maybe it's just me, but I think the more I wear this, it might come up a little bit higher on the list. But for now, I'm gonna put it in the number 10 spot. A lot of people rave about this one a lot and put this as their number one. Personally, I can't see it, but it is still a quite a good fragrance. And it's this one here from the house of Anishio, and it's this one, Side Effect. So Side Effect, like I said, is a warm, spicy, almost boozy fragrance from the rum that they use in here. But the main notes I get in this is, like I said, the rum note is the main one that I get. And then the other one is like this tobacco cinnamon smell in it. So it's very sweet, very boozy. Um, the performance on this thing is very good, in my opinion. Uh, but it had to come in at the number 10 spot just because I haven't really worn it too much. Uh, it's not, it's more like a playful fragrance. It's not something that you can take too seriously, mainly because of the rum. Uh, but it's still a nice fragrance. So coming in at the number 10 spot is a Nishio side effect. Okay, coming in at the number nine spot, I wanted to include this one as an honorable mention because in my opinion, it's a slightly better tobacco fragrance than side effect and it's slightly more wearable as well. It's not as good as another one from the same house. So I wanted to include this one as a quick honorable mention and it's this one here, Boundless by Amouage. And like I said, this to me is uh, a spicier version of Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. So Amouage, when they were creating this, they wanted to try and encapsulate a fragrance that smells like golden wood. And it's quite a cool description of it. And when I smell it, like my brain tries to pick that out, but to me, it just smells like a slightly spicier version of Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. Um, it smells a little bit like a candle almost, uh, but I really like it. But to me, it has got this really nice sticky myrrh as well as the tobacco. It just makes really nice. Um, and it's just quite sweet as well, quite sweet, quite spicy, but it is an honorable mention because of the actual number nine spot, again, from the same house. This one is just a powerhouse. It's probably the uh, one of the strongest and most projecting fragrances that I own. And it's this one again from Amouage. <laughs> it's this one here, Interlude Black Iris. And you could put the normal Interlude in here. You could put Interlude 53. I just happen to enjoy this one the most, Black Iris. Oh, wow, <laughs> it's quite gothic, it's very dark. Uh, it's it's not the most wearable one on the list, I'll be honest, uh, but I absolutely love this one. Um, like I said, it's probably the strongest projecting fragrance that I own. Uh, a story that I like to tell on the channel is this one. Uh, in my old job, I would spray this at uh, six o'clock in the morning and I would have people saying they could smell me from like 10 feet away at three o'clock in the afternoon. So it's got the projection, it's got the longevity. It does get compliments as well. A lot of people said that I smelled like uh, blue Smarties, which maybe in the dry down, I can kind of understand. But yeah, this is a strong, incense -y, resinous fragrance. Uh, so coming at the number nine spot is Interlude Black Iris. Coming in at the number eight spot, this one is again a new one on the list. 
uh, but there's just something about this that I really, really like. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's from the house of Nishane, and it's Annie. And like I said, there's just something in Nishane fragrances that I really like. There's like an almost, um, like, not dampness, but there's this like kind of off smell, if that makes any sense, like a, like a damp kind of towel smell, uh, if that makes any sense at all. But Annie has got the main note of uh, vanilla, and it also has ginger in here. So this, again, is a sweet but spicy fragrance. And I think it's very versatile. I do really, really like this one, especially for going out in the afternoons. Really nice one, it's got a good performance. So coming in at the number eight spot is Nishane Annie. Coming in at the number seven spot, this one I've kind of cheated, because uh, it is from a clone house. But um, if you think about it, niche fragrances are described as fragrances that are only made by perfume houses. And the people that make this fragrance only make fragrances. So I wanted to include it in the list, uh, kind of as like a little Easter egg sort of thing. Uh, I'm gonna consider it as a niche, even though the price is less than a designer fragrance, it is still amazing. And you probably could substitute the actual thing. Uh, this thing is like sort of trying to clone in this list, but the one that we are talking about is from the house of Lataffa, which is a clone house, I'll be honest. Uh, and it's Kamra Kawa. So this is supposed to be a sort of take on Angel Share by Killian. And I've smelled the both, and it's not that similar, I'll be honest. It's in the same ballpark, but this goes in a completely different direction. This Kawa version has got the main note uh, of coffee. It just adds on to the original Kamra, and I just really like this. It's so sweet. It's probably one uh, of the strongest sweet fragrances I own. This thing is like almost cloying sweet in a way, uh, but it really surprised me. This thing, uh, well, the original Kamra, actually inspired me to get back into uh, fragrances. Uh, I've smelled this on my friend and I was like, bro, I need to pick this up. Uh, I've actually got both versions just because of how nice I like this. And it's probably the cheapest one on the list, uh, no doubt. You can get this for about like 30 pounds, super good. Coming in at the number six spot, this one I've picked up in the last week. And this one is one that I have really been enjoying. My girlfriend really likes this one. I got a really good compliment on this one. And it's from the house of Montal. I've never actually had a fragrance from Montal before. And it's this one here. Arabian's Tonka. This one's getting a lot of hype in the community lately, and I can kind of see why. Um, usually I like to say on the channel, if my girlfriend likes it, then it's gonna be a good compliment getting fragrance. Uh, and I've tested this one out, and it's definitely true uh, in this case. Arabian's Tonka. This smells um, quite flowery, quite almost like oody. Uh, it's got a kind of darkness in here. I also get the note of sugar in here, like a sugar cane, uh, and there is also, obviously, the Tonka in here being the main note. This thing is very strong as well. It's probably the strongest fragrance on this list. This thing is really annoying me. I'll be honest, I don't like the bottle. The bottle is really annoying. It's made out of aluminium. It's the only aluminium fragrance that uh, I own. <laughs> Funny story, whenever I actually bought this, I thought like it had leaked in the bottle because if you didn't know, in Montal, they actually have um, a capacity for 150 mil or something like that so that you can allow the fragrance to macerate or um, uh, oxidize, whatever the actual real word is. Um, and I thought I got scammed. And because of how light it is, because of how much sloshing is going on in the fragrance, I thought I've been, uh, I've been duped. Uh, but that wasn't the case. It's just for maceration. Uh, really good one. I can see myself wearing this a lot whenever I'm going out. I can see this uh, getting great compliments when I go out. Uh, and I actually quite like this fragrance too. So coming in, at the number six spot is Arabian's Tonka by Montel. Kicking our list off in the top five spot. This one is probably, I'd probably say maybe apart from Kawa, this one is probably the most gourmand on the list. And actually this one and the number five spot are quite similar. I just happen to prefer this one a little bit more. I prefer the DNA. Um, the one that we are talking about is from the House of Mancera and it's this one here, Amor Cafe. So this one, I'm gonna smell it real quick. Oh, man. Yeah, it's probably maybe one of the most gourmands on the list. This one reminds me, if you were to mix this one, Kawa, with another fragrance, which is a great winter fragrance as well, by the way, this one here, By the Fireplace. If you were to mix these two together, I'm sorry, I got paint uh, on my hand, I've been painting. 
If you were to mix those two together, you would get this, Amor Cafe. So this has got the main note of coffee bean, which, like I said, Kawa has got the note of coffee. It's also got uh, brown sugar in here, an ice cream note, vanilla, and amaretto. So that's probably where the cafe bit comes from. And I really like this thing. I can see this thing doing amazing uh, for compliments. It's so sweet, it's so inviting. I'd probably say this is one of my new favorite fragrances. I just absolutely love how this one smells and other people uh, do as well. So coming in at the number five spot is Cafe Amour. Coming in at the number four spot, this one I can see some people disliking. Uh, I've, it's very hit or miss in the fragrance community. Again, it's from the House of Amouage. Uh, I absolutely love the House of Amouage. I've got over 20 of them. And this one is very hit or miss, but for me, it's in my top five. It's always gonna be in my top five. Amouage, as we know, have got some of the strongest fragrances out there. This one's no different. And it's this one here, the Orange Beast over Jaman. So this has got the main note of grapefruit. It's also got like an animalic note as well as cognac. So this is a very almost like sticky fragrance. It's a warm, spicy amber is what it's classed as. But to me, this just smells like a fleshy grapefruit covered in like cognac. With the cumin and the animalic notes, uh, it's got a sort of funk in here. So people I can see could get quite turned off by this fragrance, uh, but surprisingly, I've had great reactions with this. Whenever I wear it out, uh, I've had a lot of people say that I smell really nice. And it's also one of the strongest fragrances I own. I sprayed this on at six o'clock in the afternoon and I could still smell it the next day uh, on my skin at 12 o'clock midday the next day. So this thing is super strong. Uh, I'd probably only say wear sp three sprays of this thing. Christopher Chong, this is one of his last things for Amouage before he left. And yeah, Overture is the perfect name for it. Uh, so coming in at the number four spot, you have got Overture Man. It's also such a cool bottle design, the frosted glass. I absolutely love this one. Coming in at the number three spot, this one, again, thinking about it, is a frosted glass fragrance with the same color. Uh, this one has got the main note of honey. It's got tobacco in there, uh, as well as like lavender, lemon, cashmere. You probably know the fragrance that I am talking about if you've been around on the channel. So I won't talk about it too much, but it's this one here, Zerjoff Naxost. And this is, Oh, it is one of my favorite fragrances, favorite smells of all time. There's just something about this that is so, so good. If you've ever smelled Thierry Mugler, uh, Pure Havan, this thing is like the better version of that. It's the more wearable version, the less sweet, more kind of sophisticated version. And this is probably the, one of the most versatile ones on this list, apart from maybe the number two or the number one spot. But I absolutely love this one. Super sweet. The honey note in here is just so, so good. So coming in at the number three spot, you've got Zerjoff Naxos. Okay, coming in at the number two spot, I actually don't have my bottle with me. Uh, I must have brought it around my girlfriend's house um, because it's not here, I can't find it. Or uh, I might have swapped it with my friend. Uh, I, oh yeah, actually that's what I've done. I've uh, swapped this off my friend, Lamal Parfum, and instead he has got what is in at the number two spot, which is this one here. Creed's Royal Oud, and I do not know where to start with this fragrance because it is probably one of my favorites from the House of Creed. Maybe apart from Arolfa uh, and Green Irish Tweed, this one is up there with my favorite from the House of Creed. And it's one of the best cedar fragrances that I know of. The name Royal Oud, there's actually apparently no Oud in it. So uh, strange one, I know. Uh, but Creed's Royal Oud is so sophisticated. You've got, like I said, the main note of cedar in here. That's the kind of the main note that I'm getting from this. Uh, it's, it's also got a pink pepper note in here. So it keeps it kind of musky. It keeps it very woody. It's very sophisticated and upscale. And the dry down of this thing is so, so good. You can wear this for anywhere in the winter time. It works perfect with like the cold weather and it's very kind of cozy and inviting. And I can just see Creed's Royal Oud being worn in like a kind of old money, like mansion library is the best place I can see that fragrance working. So coming in at the number two spot is Creed's Royal Oud. Such a good one from the House of Creed. And guys, coming in at the number one spot, this one surprised me because uh, I was looking at the list and there's just something about this fragrance that I really, really like. And I've been liking it more and more and more. Whenever I first started out, I was like, okay, I'm never really gonna buy from this house. And funny enough, I actually showed another fragrance from this brand at the very start of this video, if you can remember. Uh, so I won't give it away too much, I'll, I'll get straight into it. But the number one spot is from the House of Perfumes to Mali, and it's this one here, 
Carlisle. I talked about this fragrance ages ago in uh, probably my top seven winter fragrances, which would have been probably about this time last year. I think we've been on the channel for almost a year now. And I talked about this one and I haven't talked about it since. Uh, this thing uh, only comes out in my collection towards the winter time because it's the only time I can see myself wearing it. It's got the main note of patchouli. That's the main note that I get in here. Uh, but you also do get a really, really nice vanilla, which to be honest, Perfumes de Mali do actually have really good vanilla fragrances. So you can get an older batch of this one. The performance is just insane. I think this is uh, an older batch and it's so good. The cap is so heavy. Funny enough, this thing actually reminds me of another fragrance in my collection I haven't talked about, uh, but I literally got it today. And it reminds me of this, Argos, uh, Triumph of Bacchus. And this is like the kind of sweeter, more playful version of this. This thing's quite serious, uh, but it does really good for compliments. It projects like crazy. Uh, if you're ever wearing like what I'm wearing now, uh, a black hoodie, it works perfectly for that. Uh, you can wear it in the day, you can wear it in the nighttime. Because of the vanilla, it kind of freshens it up a little bit. Uh, but the patchouli keeps it quite dark. It keeps it quite mysterious. Uh, if I can describe this, this reminds me of like something Batman would wear. And the bottle as well. Uh, the same thing. So coming in at the number one spot, so weird, for my favourite winter niche fragrance for now is this one here, Carlisle by Perfumes to Mali. Okay, so that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments below what your favourite niche winter fragrances are. It'll be really interesting to see what your favourite ones are. These ones are fairly new, so I'm going to be wearing them a lot more, uh, and I'm going to be picking up a few more as well. Uh, maybe I'll make an updated video uh, in the next month or so. Remember, as always, guys, if you've watched up to this point in this video, please don't forget to drop a like. It really does help on the channel. Honestly, go on and do it. <laughs> also, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're a fan of fragrances. If you guys want to learn how I actually managed to get all of these fragrances uh, in like the space of two or three months, all these niche fragrances, without any cost, are of my own pocket, then I have got a decanting course. It's £10 and it teaches you step by step by step everything there is to know about actually decanting your fragrances out, put your fragrances into little sample bottles and sell them for sometimes a bit of profit and actually get back all of your money so that you can keep growing your fragrance collection without any cost. So again, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I will leave a link. It's going to be the first line in the description below. So thank you guys all for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.